Our next project was sent in by Gergu, and it's miniatures, <laughs> little bitty dudes. This is another one of those projects where we get to return to the central theme of this channel, which is if you want to cast something in resin, you got to design it to be cast in resin. And as usual, uh, Gergu wasn't thinking about casting these in resin. He was thinking about making cool little pieces, uh, but he was not thinking about the difficulties that, that he was designing into these pieces that make them difficult and a challenge to cast. Let's, let's begin by looking at the feet. You can see there's a hole between the legs, which I'm not loving, but that's not the biggest problem. Look at that gap between the tail and the base. That gap is completely, utterly unnecessary. This piece, when it gets cast, it's going to hang like this in the mold. So it's going to be inside of a cup and it's going to be like this. So in the mold, it's going to pour through the base. It's going to pour through these feet. So whenever you look at the design of your piece, you always hang it upside down and right away, instantaneously, you see that that tail right there is a perfect spot for misery, heartache, pain, and suffering, particularly because it's got three lobes. Check those out. Each one of these lobes is a perfect place to catch bubbles. So a much better design would have been to attach the tail to the base, all the way down to the base, and fill in behind the tail and behind the legs. And also, if you look closely right there, you can see there's a hole between the scabbard of the sword. See that hole? Look at that hole. That's just a rubber trap because the rubber is going to go in and through and around and through. And you're going to have all these little cuts in there and you're going to have tiny little fragile pieces of rubber and you've got just a big stinking mess. And it could have been designed so that the feet, the sword, and the tail all made a nice thick base through which the resin was just, just poured right in. No worries, no problems. Uh, lots and lots and lots of problems here. Cute little sculpt, fun character, miserably hard to cast. I got the pieces mounted on these little waxed wooden discs, which simply makes them easier to handle and fit in the cut better. All three of these pieces have the same issues that I described on this one. They both have gaps and holes between their legs, which we are going to solve by filling would have been far easier to do this in the sculpt than it is to do this at this stage. The tough one by far is this tail. What do you guys think? Should I fill this in and just kind of build out a, a, a base that's not even, that's not a disc? That's what I'm going to do. Okay, see what I've done? Totally filled all that in. Now I'm going to go back in and re-sculpt a little, make it a little nicer. I'll clean it all up, make it prettier, but at least now I have a reasonable chance of it not catching air under there. And the mouse is the same thing. The mouse just has a, just the, the entire underneath part of the mouse is just a giant trap of, of bubbles. So all that has to be filled. Same thing. They're all the same. They all have the same flaw. No thought given to casting. There's a giant, giant space be, between the cape and the feet and the back there. You just, you simply cannot cast things like that. That's a trap that causes the rubber to flow in there and then in the first casting it just breaks off because it's, it's locked into place. As a toy prototype sculptor, this is exactly what I did for a living, was look at characters and then turn them into sculptures, objects that could be manufactured. And that meant that you have to sacrifice detail and you have to sacrifice design to make things possible. I've got the vents going. And uh, because it's going to hang in space like this and fill from the bottom, the air is going to vent out of these little tubes. So let me show you how I put those on there. So let's just take a little tiny dollop of sticky wax. Let's get this thing anchored on there. Just touch that on there like that. Okay. Now obviously it's way too long. Let's cut it off. Like that. Fix it to the base. I'm using these little teeny tiny vents because these pieces are so small. So it's pretty well attached. Now you just want to make a clean attachment point to where the vent attaches to the part. The cleaner that is, the less you have to clean up later. You still have to cut off each and every one of those vents and clean each and every one of those connection points. There's no getting around it. So now I'm just looking at this piece wondering if that's all I'm going to need. 
with respect to vents, hold it upside down because that's how it's going to pour. That's how it's going to cast is upside down like this. Okay, so now these two are basically done. This one really only has one critical thing hanging down and that's the scabbard of this sword. Okay, attach the, attach the vent, cut it off like that. And go ahead and just push it into place. Okay, so now the vent is basically running to the sword, but we want to make a nice clean connection between the vent and the model. I think these are ready to go. We can get them mounted in the cups and let's pour some rubber. As always, pour it from the bottom up, let it rise up, push the air out in front of it. It's always how you do it. You let the rubber push the air up and out of the mold. Okay, you want to try to avoid doing what I just did on that face. Try not to drape the character. I think we're going to get away with it from where I did. I just barely hit him, but you definitely don't want to be draping rubber around your character. You want the rubber to rise up. I'm kind of waiting now because I want that. I see a gap between the sword and the ear and the side of the face. And I want to see that rubber rising up in there. And you give it a nice eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch maybe, of rubber on top. Now I completely guesstimated how much rubber I was going to need for these three. Just eyeballed it as I am want to do. And we'll see if I have enough to cover the tip of that sword that's sticking up there. I got just a little bit sticking up. So what are we doing when that happens to us? Break out the chunkies. Just shove them in. Just shove in the chunkies. This works out really well to fill up spaces just using pieces of old molds. Perfect. All right. Let's wait 24 hours to see what happens. Well, let's cut these cups open without cutting my fingers open. How about that for a project? Wouldn't that be funny? That was efficient. Worked out pretty well. Beautiful. Thing about the bases is they don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be perfect. And then the question is, is the part gonna pop off the base easy? Oh yeah, look at that. I got all the wood plugs taken out and I uh, popped the sculptures off the bases very easily. Another advantage to sticky wax as opposed to hot melt glue. Sticky wax holds strong but pops apart easily. That's why I love wax for this purpose. The vents tell you where your cuts are going to be. So let's do one and see how we get on. The easiest way to cut rubber is to stretch it. So I stretch it apart with my fingers. I'm also using a brand new razor sharp exacto blade it's very very handy to have a very sharp blade the, the hardest part with cutting a mold is starting once you get going it gets easier and you use the vent as your guide you want to cut down right down through the middle of that vent and that vent is telling me where i'm going down to see how you can see it there nice and clear and we only want to cut far enough to release the part you never, ever, ever, ever want to cut a one-piece cut mold apart. That's why they're called one-piece cut molds, because they're, they stay in one piece. You don't cut them into chunkies. I see this all the time. You guys send me your projects. I see the mold has been cut into 28 different pieces, and you'll never get that. <laughs> You're never going to get that thing reassembled properly. This is not going to happen. The genius of one-piece cut molds is the part that says one piece. It's what you want it to be. Little molds are the easiest to cut, actually. Great big molds can be very tricky to cut because the rubber puts up such a fight. Little molds, generally, pretty easy to cut. So I'm cutting right along that ear. Cut along that ear perfectly. Nice. That's probably more than enough 
to get that part out of there. Hello, look at that. Popped right out. Nice and clean. Ooh, I think that's gonna make a clean mold. I'm not seeing any bubbles. Well, we'll see with the casting. And look at that parting line. Look at that parting line close up. Look at that. Look at that parting line. That is what you wanna see. Look at that parting line. Look at it. Admire that. This is why I don't do two-piece molds. You are never in your life gonna get a parting line that looks like that out of a two-piece mold. Invisible parting lines. That's what we wanna see. I'm gonna go ahead, cut the other two just exactly the same. The only difference is this one has three cuts. So I'm gonna come in from here, here a little bit, just enough to free the front part, and here, and we will have molds ready to pour. All right, so all our little guys came out of the molds just fine. No problems at all, no breaks, nothing. So that's good. And the molds themselves, nice and complex. Uh, came out just fine too, no worries. Closing up nice. I think that uh, that's gonna give us a good result. This was the first one we cut that I showed you, and that's just about as clean a cut mold as you can get. Now you understand the power of those jagged surfaces. This is what those surfaces, exactly what these surfaces need to look like. They don't need to be wildly interlocking, but these surfaces will just fall together and just lock together, just as neat as, as, can, as can be. And we, I'm fully expecting to get very minimal parting lines. Same with this. See the interlocks? And that mold looks good. It should all release just fine. All right, let's band these molds on up and let's go pour some resin. All right, let's mix up some res. There's a scale of sensitive enough to weigh each and every one of those drops. Let's mix it and pour it. Oh yeah, 30 grams is gonna be way enough. More than enough. Mix, mix, mix. This is quick cast, it goes off fast. But it's quite cool in the studio today. So we're not in any big hurry. Okay, and away we go. Now what I'm gonna do is just pour them. Wow, they're little. They pour quick. <laughs> they pour quick. And then I'm gonna rock them and roll them. Jiggle them, rock them, roll them. Not seeing any bubbles coming out. That's a good sign. If you've vented them properly, you won't get a lot of bubbles, but sometimes it's helpful to rock and roll a casting like I'm doing. Get into all the points and projections. Already I can feel this resin getting warm. I think we're ready to get these into the tank. Let's do it. Close the outlet valve. Put in the lid. No way we go. Witness cup tells us we're ready to go. Let's pull them out of the tank. Beauteous. All right. And see what we got. Fun and games. Thank you. You did your job. You did your job. Everyone did their jobs. Rubber bands did their jobs. What do you guys think? Think we got a winner here? Let's try this one first. Doesn't matter. Let's open it up. Let's see what we got. Ooh, let's see what we got. Let's see if we got a casting here. Let's pull it. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that. That's pretty nice. I'm not seeing any bubbles anywhere. Uh-oh, little bubble right there in the tip of the tail, but that's pretty easy to fix, but we'll watch out for that in future castings. That's an area that once says it fills up, up in there, wants to catch a bubble at the bottom. All right, but we got the ax to cast. Look at that, it's gonna be some cleanup, but no big deal, we got it to cast. All right, nice, all right, number one. This one's complicated because it has more vents. So let's get it going. Sometimes the first one out of the mold, you gotta look at it and make adjustments. See if it, anything you have to do to change it to get a good casting. Let's pull it. Wow. Looking. What do you guys think? You see it? Looks pretty good. I don't see bubbles. Any bubbles yet? Any bubbles? 
See why I stuck that tail? Hard to see it, but right there is where I stuck that tail onto that base, and they cast perfectly. And that's not a big change on this piece, but it made it castable. All right, I think he's clean, man. I think he's perfect. He came out perfect. Excellent. And then this guy, look at this guy coming out of the mold. <laughs> look at that, uh-oh, there's a bubble right there. Ooh, wicked bubble. That would be, have to be a repair job. Uh-oh, we'll get to see if we can't get a better casting than that. Okay, let's look at him. Back's good. Everything's good. But we did... Okay, so we did catch a bubble in there. That would be a pre-paint area. That's easy enough to fix, but who wants to fix castings? We want them to come out clean. Otherwise, I think we got them. Looking good. That chip is in the sculpt, the chipped ear. Nice. All right. Pretty good, I would say. Pretty darn good. So let me show you how I'm gonna go about fixing these pieces. This one's perfect. We don't need to do any modification. We can just pour them again. This one, where we caught the bubble, was right in there. So we're gonna pre-fill that a little bit. And one way to do that, I notch the mold where the problem is. So I can do a lot of tapping right in there to help force that resin in there, but I'm also gonna push it in. Same exact thing with this. The problem area was this little scabbard right here. And that is right here, right down in there. See that? See that little area, that little place? That's where it caught the bubble, right down in there. Same thing. We're going to pre-fill that. We're going to make sure that resin gets down in there. So let's go mix up some res. Small batch mixes up quick and easy. Okay, we can go ahead and dump this. Just like that. Now, let's, we don't have a rubber band on this yet. Let's see if we can't drop some resin right down in there. Just dropping resin down into that tail. Just like that, okay? Now we can band it, make sure it's all together. We can pour it, and we can tap it. I don't see any bubbles rising up. Okay, same with this. Let's see if we can't get some resin down into that problem area. Down in there, okay, down in there, there you go. Get the rubber band on there and pour it. Go, 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 same thing, let's tap it. Okay, let's fill, let's fill, fill, fill. Gotta go, it's gonna set up on us. Now this is fast cast, I'm, I'm moving fast because it's already starting to gel, but it is looking beautiful. Let's get it into the tank, see how we did. Now, one way to fix these little guys that need repairing is I mixed up a small batch, and I do mean a small batch of resin. All I'm gonna do is use that resin, fill the little hole. Just put it on there like that, a bubble. If you make like a little bubble of resin, you can see that? If you make a little bubble of, of resin on the end, that might be just enough just enough to fill it and it'll stick. See if we can just drop a drop onto there, just like that. And that might be all you need. Now you could sand it, with any luck that will stick. Yep, might work. Okay, let's see if that worked. Just literally using the same resin that I just mixed to make a repair. All right, let's see how we did. Now we know that this boy came out good the first time. Yep, looks good, another clean casting. Okay, winner on that one. Now let's take a look. We know we had some problems with these. Let's see how we did on that tail. Looks like we got it. It's got a weird, let me see something here. Yep, the tail has got a little raggedy ending to it. And this caught that just perfectly. So we got that one. So that's a winner. That fill job worked well. 
And let's see about this one. And this time, I think because I, the resin was gelling a little bit, we caught a little teeny bubble in here. Little bubbles, not too bad, both easy to fix. Sometimes you fix one thing and you cause another problem. But I really think that if you are just doing this one character and you were careful, you could do, a, you have a couple of choices. If I was doing this in production, I needed to make a hundred of them, I'd be inclined to put a vent, a vent right there and solve that problem altogether. And that would just eliminate that problem. And uh, this cattail, I would just make sure that I got it in there, got that resin down in there, because this otherwise this one casts just perfectly. I really do believe that the bubble was caused by the fact that the resin, I could tell, was getting a little syrupy as it was going in there. I was a little worried about that. But overall, uh, this is a perfectly usable casting with very minor flaws and easy to fix. Overall, I'm pretty pleased with the way these things came out. If you like this video, hit that like button. It really does help the channel. Thanks for watching. I will see you next week.